Hi, my name's Ken, and I own Good Start Packaging in Bedford, New Hampshire. With my Spark Cash Card from Capital One, I earn unlimited 2% cash back on all my business purchases. And last year, that added up to $36,000 in cash back. That's right, $36,000. Thanks to that, I was able to offer health care to my employees. The Spark Cash Card did a lot for my business. Imagine what it could do for yours. What's in your wallet? Real Capital One customers pay for real stories. Credit approval required. Blog Talk Radio. I'm your host, Yvonne Mason, and that song I deliberately played for this show for my friend and one of the guests tonight, and I know she knows why I played it, we'll discuss it in a (laughs) bit, but I want to welcome everybody to the show tonight, and thank you one and all for showing up yet one more time. For those of you who are new to the show, and we have a surprise guest that in my infinite stupidity with all that's going on in my life, 
I met him in October. I, I think I doubled. But anyway, he's here. I believe in divine providence, and it's all going to be beautiful, beautiful. I was going to go by real fast. We'll talk about all that in a minute. But we are reaching 134,000 plus just on this show. When you add all the podcasts to the to to the numbers, because we're heard now on two shows on iHeartRadio, we're heard on Southern Chats with Yvonne Mason, and we're heard on Off the Chain. We're heard on Reverb Nation and YouTube and iTunes and Podcast.com and Podcast Garden, SoundCloud, MixCloud, Spreaker, FM.com, TuneIn Radio, you name it, we're there. Well, we're now in over 200 countries, and we're growing every day. And and this is an opportunity for you as a listener to either become a guest on the show or to be a sponsor for the show. And no, I'm not in it to get rich for sponsorship. I'm in it to pay it forward. Those that know me know that my goal in life is to give everyone the opportunity that I have been afforded, and that is to be heard And with being heard in over 200 countries with a total listening base of over 200,000 people, you can't get better than that. For 30 days, if you become a sponsor for the show, for 30 days, I'll run your ad. And if I have to reschedule the show, because you know, most of you know, my husband is very, very ill and he's getting worse every day. The ad goes with the show. So you will get, no matter how many shows, you get a 30-day ad. And it's for 10 bucks. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. And what I will do is you contact me either to be a guest on the show or to become a sponsor at off the chain radio at yahoo.com. And I'll tell you how to, how to do everything. And it's all real simple because I believe in the kiss method and let's get you the exposure that you deserve because each and every one of you are great. And with that being said, I want to welcome the, some of the sponsors to the show that some have been with me for a while. Some are new sponsors. Those of you who have been with me for a while know Diane Moat. She's been on this show, and she has a series. It's called the Sam Holden Series, and Sam Holden is a vigilante. Well, she's back. Diane has released the third book in the series called Dog Bones, and her quest to avenge abused animals is threatened when they get after her, but it's a question of what to get on the other side. Will her double life be exposed? Will Sam be able to protect the animals, her friends, and herself? Check out Dog Bones by Diane Mode everywhere ebooks are sold. And if you haven't started the series yet, ladies and gentlemen, be sure to begin with Dog Dog Gone for free on Amazon. J. Traveler Pelton. She also has been on the show. This is an amazing woman. She's just released two books. I do good to release one book, but she's released two books. One of them is Kai Dante Strategic. And it goes that people are so happy about the destruction of the anti-fertility virus, they want Kai to run for president. Kai Dante for president indeed. The Oberlins are back. And in successfully diverting the virus that is destroying the fertility of the populace, but in return, sanctuary is attacked and the family members are scattered to fight radiation sickness alone. Given only a strange point to use, will Kai and Michael, her brother, figure out the puzzle before they all die? Who in the family will survive to destroy the tyrant running the Brotherhood? The second book she has released is called Clan Falconer's War. It is a fantasy set in future medieval times after the big war. Lucian thought that as the youngest son of manor, his future would be as simple as the landowning farmer who raised good horses and went up to the manor to visit the family for holidays. After all, there were seven brothers older than he with much more entitlement to the inheritance. However... Through a massacre and magic, his simple acceptance of a quiet life was going to come to a roaring end as he ends up leading the forces of his clan and the kingdom against an evil greater than any wizard had ever faced, an evil led by his own brothers. Will he, his clan, and Falcon Crest survive the war? Now, we have two new sponsors. The first one is Audio Bookworm Promotions, and this sponsor is run by a young lady named Jess, and she says, looking for a listen? Adopt, don't shop for your next audiobook favorite. The Adopt an Audiobook program has new releases and audiobooks of every genre. All audiobooks are free to interested reviewers, and that is the kick, ladies and gentlemen. You have to promise to give a review in order to get the book free. You simply listen and share your thoughts. Audiobookwormpromotions.com forward slash audio 
adopt an audio book. Amy Law, she has been on this show. This is one funny woman. She is a comedian and actor, and she lives in Atlanta, my hometown, and she has a unique outlook on life. Most people hide their failures, but not Amy. She wrote an entire book about hers. It's called The Book of Failures. The book opens with, I have been married for 20 years. Not to the same people, but 20 years nonetheless. The book talks about relationships, how hard it is to blend a family, and just funny failures of everyday life. The reason it's been a bestseller for over a year is because it is so relatable. Everybody needs more laughter in their lives. So buy it for yourself or for a friend or even an enemy that is going through a hard time. The Book of Failures is available at some Barnes & Noble stores and on Amazon as a paperback, ebook, or audio. The Book of Failures by Amy Law. Get it today. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, let's get started with our show. Someone who I absolutely love dearly, have loved her from the moment that I met her. And even though she says she isn't a Southerner, she was in another life. She just won't get into it. <laughs> Trust me, this one. I know Southerners. I are one. <laughs> and she is one. Author Sherry Ritzler has joined me tonight to talk about her new book and Love and Blood, which has just been released, and I I started reading it. I haven't finished it because if I stayed up all night, then I would never get any sleep at all, and I need just maybe an hour or two of sleep. But the woman's insatiable. And then our surprise guest, Eric Rosenberg, who is a financial planner, who somehow or another, we got our wires crossed. He's due to come on on October, but you know, God works in mysterious ways. Because he is a financial planner, and he can help all of y'all plan your money, plan your retirement, and teach authors how to run your business. Yes, writing is a business. Sherry will attest to that. I will attest to that. This radio show is a business. But anyway, welcome both of you to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Thank oh, you Yvonne, so much. Thank you so much. It's just a joy. And, and to know that your audience is growing by leaps and bounds, kudos to you, lady. Oh, it's all y'all's fault. This isn't my show. It quit being my show after the first episode <laughs> two years ago. Eric, I want to tell you just a little bit. I started this show five years. I, I planned this show for five years. I had a five plan because I knew my husband was going to get worse, and I would not be able to go do book events, and I needed to stay out there. So I've been on enough online radio shows. I said, okay, I'll run, the, I'll run a show. Well, I put a call out. And said, okay, I'm going to do this show. How many want to be on this show? Not only did they fill up the first six months, they brought more people. And this thing just <laughs> took off. And then I, I went on the podcast thing where I found you and 20 million other people. So I'm booked through <laughs> the first of February. Wow. That's quite a that's quite a demand. Well, I'm excited that I was able to make it on the earlier side, <laughs> side of that wave of new guests. <laughs> Absolutely, I love it. I love it. I love it. Now, I, I do have to say there was some 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 um, what I call does that never showed up, but you know it's their law. I hate it for them. They can't complain anymore. Yeah, if, if you don't show up, I mean, that that's half a business, right? Or, you know, it's the same thing with writing a book. To sell a book, you have to write it. You have to show up. Yeah. Exactly. That's exactly right. And what Yvonne does for authors everywhere, she offers them this free interview, which is free promotion, which is incredible, a, a gift to every author who's trying to get their name and their voice and their product out there to the people. And people who don't show up are just not getting it. I, I don't <laughs> understand those people. <laughs> I, I, they just don't want to come play with us because they don't understand. And they don't understand that when I say a show, Eric, this show is called Off the Chain for a reason. I don't do a scripted show because just like tonight, I have no idea what's going to happen if I do a scripted <laughs> show. It's so no anyone, fun. Anyone who's a no-show is missing out on all the fun. It's their loss. That's Absolutely. right. My God. I, you know what? I like Eric. He's going to be a regular now. He just doesn't know it yet. Oh, yeah, he's in. in. He's, he's definitely in. <laughs> <laughs> he just fits right in with this group of crazies. So, 
I even have some southern roots in my family. I, I'm a Californian these days, but I grew up with uh, – my dad grew up in Dallas, so uh, he, he was a Texan. And um, then he moved to Fayetteville, Arkansas when my grandpa got a job there as a college professor in marketing. And he was there my whole life while I was growing up. And then my sister was a Razorback, my dad was a Razorback, and then my sister went to medical school in Little Rock. So I have some serious southern connections there. <laughs> See, but this is the problem. I am not a southerner. See, this is I'm Eric. I've been trying to tell you, Vaughn. I was born in Illinois. I went to school in, in junior high and high school in Florida. I went into the Air Force. I'm retired Air Force, and I've traveled all over. And I retired from the Air Force in South Carolina, and then lived there for a while until my husband, who I met and married in South Carolina, and I moved up here to North Carolina. And so here we've been ever since, but I am not actually, a, I'm not actually a Southerner. <laughs> Are you, would she you say you're an adopted another, Southerner? Well, she Part, was in another me? life. You're, Eric <laughs> said you're an adopted Southerner. She was a there Southerner in another life, I'm telling you, <laughs> because <laughs> I just don't gravitate towards people as openly as I gravitated towards Sherry when I first oh, met her. The minute we met each other, it was like magic. It was like it was like sister, come here. You know, yeah, exactly. Wonderful. And I don't do that. I'm a very closed person. I, mm -hmm. I wear a mask when I when I meet people because I don't let a lot of people in. But with mm -hmm. Sherry, it was instantaneous. So I know in another life she was a damn southerner. She just might as well get over. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm over it now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get busy, Sherry. Let's start yeah. with you. Okay. Let's talk about Dre and Ray and, and the infighting that is going. How rude. What infighting? Well, I'm just into the new book, and, and Dre is just, she's picking on Victoria, and it's just like a soap oh, opera. <laughs> All right, let, let's clue Eric in so he knows what's going on. So I have this series. It's called the Evening Bower Series. And the Evening Bower is a place that exists outside of New Orleans in Louisiana. And it began, the whole story, this whole series began with um, the Gypsy Thorn, which was about Drachomira, a gypsy-born bastard girl who married a royal and became a vampire later in her life, and her story's coming up soon. But basically, she was a tool used by the angel of death to bring together a, a legendary phoenix and the person who was carrying the legendary phoenix's mate's spirit, uh, who happened to be a vampire, who was made a vampire during the American Revolutionary War. Drahamira was the vehicle that the angel of death used to bring these people together because he was protecting the great book of forgetting, which came from Atlantis. And he knew there was a great prophecy still to be fulfilled by the Scarlet Phoenix. And to do that, he had to be sure that the Phoenix survived and met this vampire. And so he set Dre out to be the protector. Okay, so that happened in Gypsy Thorn. She got everybody together, and she met all these people, and we learned lots. Okay, then came book number one in the series called Time and Blood. In Time and Blood, Rhea and Amorel, or JL, got together. They fell in love, and they their spirits were united. But the vampire who was imbued with the spirit of Rhea's long-lost love um, fired his blood enough that they, when they had um, intimate relations, it was something that enabled Rhea to be pregnant, and she delivered this baby, who was, as they thought, the fulfillment of a, the long ancient prophecy. And the baby is part vampire and part phoenix. At least this is what they believed was the fulfillment of a prophecy. Uh, they made this big battle at the end to protect themselves from people who were trying to kill the phoenix and destroy the book, and they all failed, and our people won. Yay, us. Well, come for the new book now where we are, in Love and Blood, turns out maybe they didn't do such a good thing after all, and maybe 
the boy, Destin, is not the fulfillment of the great prophecy that they believed because now there are big people who are the bosses of the people in the last book of the villains who were trying to kill them. The big people are now coming for the phoenix and the baby and the book. So this is where we are now. And in blood, <laughs> yeah, and so in Love and Blood, the new book, we are faced with now the great dilemma is is Rhea and JL's uh, destiny to have this child the, going to be this great fulfillment, and is Dre's job done protecting them, or must she now protect the baby? Who knows? But we begin Love and Blood with a tarot reading by a young woman who lives in the power, and her name is Victoria, and she is a tarot reader or a seer, and she's trying to tell Rhea, hey, I've had this tarot reading, and trouble's coming, but not from where you would expect. And that kicks off this whole story that's about to happen. Um, the question is, who is going to come to the bower, where the evening bower is, and will the child survive? What's the great secret? Where is the big fight going to be, and what's going to happen next? And who will survive? And who will, and if anyone will survive. But Dre, Dre is a smart aleck, redhead, sassy, seductive, very dangerous vampire. And by the way, she does not sparkle. She does not have regrets. She's not an old soul fool. Oh, I wish I was still human. No, 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 no. <laughs> Dre is happy to she's be a vampire. Happy. Oh, she's happy to be a vampire, and she loves to kill. And if you don't like that, that's just too bad. And she likes to tease people. And in a very kind of dark humor sort of way, is, you know, she also has an Irish wolfhound who is, his name is Reaper. He's a love until he's not. And, uh, you know, she's a lot of fun and she's scary and, you know, she just bothers people. <laughs> and I want to be her when I grow up. <laughs> I have actually quite a following for Dre. It's kind of amazing. Um, most people, when they when I ask them about the books, they go, "Oh yeah, I love the love story between Ray and 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 Amora. That's great." But wow, Dre! <laughs> <You know? laughs> so Dre turns out to be my alter ego. So there you go. Yeah, because Sherry's a redhead, Eric. You got to be careful I am not. with redhead. I'm not a redhead. I'm a blonde. Are you also I a vampire? A- Oh, yes, absolutely. No. <laughs> she would like to be. That I'm sure I was in another life. <laughs> <laughs> and when, you, when you're writing your books, I mean, asking as, as kind of the, the ignorant outsider, do you do a lot of research into the, the history and the lore of vampires and weave that into your story? Or do you, do you build it all up uh, as, as an original thought? Well, I have my own canon and my own uh, legends that are built into my books because these are characters that I created back in 1997. So they have been with me and they've been written about for a long time. Um, they started out being online and stories that, that I and many other people wrote live stories online. Um, but I develop my characters to live in the real world, except for Atlantis, of course. And, um, and so I have done history uh, readings and research to because like in the Gypsy Thorn we travel from 886 uh, AD all the way into 1997 and so I had to know things about you know Knights Templar and and foreign places and World War One and so I had to read all sorts of things so I could weave my characters through a realistic time period and and make it feel like it could have happened. Um, I think that is the essence of good fiction, is that if I can make you believe it's possible this might have happened, then you'll go with me in my story. Oh, that sounds like a lot of fun. I bet that research and reading was a lot of fun as you, as you put it all together. <laughs> it, it's it's a lot of work. As Yvonne will oh, tell you, yeah. anytime you get it's that research hole, you start researching and, you, and then you're researching more and that leads you to another place. And pretty soon you're like down the great research abyss. <laughs> and you're like, I gotta get out of this. Um, so yeah, you go down. We call it the research rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> if if you're into history, there's a podcast I really enjoy called Hardcore History, and that is all he does. He goes down research rabbit holes on one historic topic, and episodes are something like four to six hours long. Wow. It's not a typical wow. podcast. <laughs> yeah, that would be that would be a bit much. 
but I keep I keep records of all my histories that I've used in in all of my books, so that I can, if I need to, go back and reference certain time periods and events that actually happened, and then find a way to work my fictional characters into these events. Um, they they live and breathe through real world, um, you know, cataclysms, so they have to belong and 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 know what's going on. Um, you can't have a vampire traversing through World War One without knowing where the bombings were and, and what part they may have played or surviving the bubonic plague without, you know, having lived in certain countries and seen what happened. So it it just has to have some reality to it. So compared to all and that, it, finance sounds feels easy to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I suppose it would depend on which side of the fence you sit because talking about finances makes my blood run cold. So, you know, there, there we you go. go. That that, would, that, that's why the world is such a beautiful place, though. We we need the writers uh, and the artists, and we need the finance people. Exactly. We need everybody. <laughs> that, that is true. Everybody has a purpose. That's right. And if we all do our job, the world is beautiful. So what the hell happened? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody forgot they had a job? I don't know. Maybe people got <laughs> bored. I don't know. Or either they just got stupid. I'm going for oh. I just got stupid, and there's no cure yeah. for stupid. <laughs> yeah, I go with People that. Stop paying attention. When you stop paying attention to the world around you, it's, it's easy to get you know, wrapped so wrapped up in our own personal lives. I mean, we only live and see things through our own perspective, but there's so much going on around us that if you ignore it, it's uh, we have to participate in the system. Exactly. Amen to that. If you are not a participant, then you're part of the problem. And you can't complain. That's right. That's true. That's right. That well, but true. they will anyway, but they shouldn't. But. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> so, Sherry, you know why I played that song, right? Oh, the fire burning it up, baby. I love that. <laughs> you got Ray right on that. <laughs> Burn that house down. And in the second book, Eric, there is this huge scene that is towards the end of the book, and as I'm reading it. This visual is running through my head, and it, anytime I watch a movie and there's a huge fight scene or this huge car chase, it's like a 10-minute fight scene or a 20-minute car chase, and it's, it, I call it a filler because it takes them that they have to fill up the space. Well, this particular scene in Sherry's book is, trust me, it is not a filler. You're right in the middle of that blooming fire, and you're wondering <laughs> who's going to survive if anybody <laughs> Are you are you talking about the new book or are you talking about Time and Blood? I'm talking about Time and Blood. Yeah, you said the new book. It's no, it's Love and Blood's the new book. You're talking Love, about the last right. book. Yeah, the last book. Oh yeah, that yeah. last fire is like a uh, dilly. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. And you wonder, okay, <laughs> is it is it ever gonna stop? <laughs> but it's fast. So Eric, it burns fast. It, it, yeah. So Eric, let's bring you into this because part of part of marketing as an author as an entrepreneur as someone that has a 501c3 part of marketing is finance you have to a put yourself out there you have to understand your finances and you have to have a plan so explain to folks how that works as an author Yes, absolutely. That's a great question. So, you know, I've I've done a little writing myself. I'm working on my big book. And I started out, I wrote, when I was just getting going as a blogger, I wrote a little short book called uh, The Personal Finance Arsenal. So I've got a little taste of self-publishing there. But when you look at, at the full landscape of being an author today, there's so many different routes you can take. You know, you can self-publish, you could, you know, just write it out and, and click a couple buttons and it's live on Amazon. Or you could go through a more traditional route and work with a publisher but either way, it doesn't work unless you, you get started. You know, that's something we talked about right before we started recording, is if you want any business to work, it, you have to start. You, know, you have to have your day one. So you have to get there. You have to put the pen to the paper or the fingers on the keyboard and start writing. But that's just part of it. You know, if you write your book and you have the most wonderful and amazing book ever re- written and no one reads it, that'd be such a shame. So that marketing part is so key. And building you know, build the marketing side, depending on your background, there's a lot of different ways that that can work. You know, if you started online, if you started you know, as, as an online writer or a blogger or something like that, you might already have an audience you can tap into 
uh, when it comes time to release your book. But if you're just starting from scratch, you have to build that audience and you have to build that fan base. And sometimes that takes an investment of either time or dollars to get people to notice you. And would wouldn't you fair? agree, maybe, Eric, that when you're first getting started, that it's to a writer's benefit to start building that social base ahead of time before you publish, to to sort of have that anchor to fall on once the book comes out, and you can say, okay, my friends, my lovers, my family, my readers, um, you know, here's my new book, and they can then help you uh, as you as you hit that social marketing. Oh, definitely. You know, when you look, if you look on your Facebook, let's say you have a Facebook, you know, most people do at this point in the U.S., if you log on there, you have a list of friends and family who is more likely to support you than them. If you're, if you're reaching out to somebody, if you reach out to you know, a bunch of strangers who've never heard of you versus some friends who you've known for a long time, who is more likely to support your new book? It's going to be that friend. So that's always a great place to start. And you can start building that base of, of an audience and fans outside of your family and friends. You know, it, starting today would be great. Even if your book's not going to come out for five years, getting known as the expert in whatever it is you do helps so much in, in one, once you're ready to sell that product. Amen. I agree to that. Absolutely. I wish I'd known that when I was getting ready to get started because I, I officially – entered the publishing arena in 2013 and no one at that time was saying, Hey, you have to have this big social media base and you have to do this. And I had already been on Twitter for probably two, maybe two years. And I had met some wonderful people who introduced me to other wonderful people, but I wasn't doing it to make this major connection for my book. I was just connecting. It was something I liked. I was not on Facebook yet. I was dragging my face to be on Facebook because I'd heard terrible things about it and <laughs> I didn't want to get caught in all that drama and everything. So but when the book was finally published, my my publisher said, Hey, you need to be on Facebook because you need to make more connections and so I came late to the party. Had I known earlier, well I'd have been all over that. And now today young authors are finding it easier because they've already heard um, you need a social media presence, and most of them already have one between Instagram and Pinterest and Snapchat and Tumblr. They're already out there, um, so they're already a little bit ahead of the game. The problem is they're not marketing themselves. They're just out there chit-chatting. They're not really building a brand, which I think you would agree an author or a potential author needs to do right from the beginning. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. When you, if you look at my Twitter profile, I'm Eric Profits on Twitter, which you could guess Profits ties into my brand. And if you click on it, you see me in a shirt that says, hello, my name is Profiteer. That's what I call my listeners on my <laughs> podcast and, and my readers. And you know, that's all part of the brand. It's part of the package. When I want someone to think of me, when, when my book uh, that I've started writing, it's called Personal Profitability. When that comes out, I want people to think of Eric Rosenberg as tied to profitability, as tied to personal finance. So if you are, you know, let's say you're a writer who writes a lot about vampires, for example. I don't know where I came up with that example. <laughs> <laughs> but let's just say that you're a writer and you really enjoy the vampire genre. And you know, one great place to start could be you know, set up that Twitter account and start following other authors who write about vampires and, and similar genres because there's a good chance well, one, that they could end up being a friend because they like the same thing you like. I actually have most of my good friends today are, are people who I met through the personal finance blogging community, which mm -hmm. surprised me in the beginning. The first time I went to a, a finance blogger conference, I wasn't sure what I was going to be getting into. You know, when, when you think of that in your head, I'm like, am I going to be walking into a room full of a bunch of accountants? And, and it, was, <laughs> it did not feel like that. Finance people party a lot more than I expected. <laughs> they also <laughs> became such great friends because we have that, that in common. And that, and that shared interest. So connecting with other authors in the same category could be a great way to, to build your network and build friendships. But also, those authors have likely been, whether they have one book or they've been writing for decades, they have somewhat of a following. And there's a good chance the people who follow someone else who writes about what you write about might be interested when you, write, when you have a book come out. And there's a lot of great cross-promotion in author communities like that. So you know, definitely find find your tribe, find your people, and connect with them on social media, and they could lead you to those bigger audiences who are already interested in what you're doing. 
So hold that thought, true. guys. Hold okay. that thought one second. I'm going to pay some bills real quick. So this okay. is off the chain with your host, Yvonne Mason, and two wonderful, wonderful, wonderful guests, Arthur Sherry Rensler, who I absolutely love and adore with all of my heart. She is my sister from another mother. And Eric <laughs> Rosenberg, who made a surprise appearance, and thank God he did. He is a um, financial person, and he's teaching us how to market and how to get our work out there. And he just told us a little secret. He's also going to be a future author. So hold on, and we will be right back. Do you have cougars on your porch swing? <coughs> Our horse is your new best friend. <coughs> Do your nicest shoes get buried knee deep in snow as your toes turn blue? <coughs> Are you bothered by wolves at your woodpile? <coughs> no, not that kind of wolf. <laughs> Join wildlife artist and author Nancy Quinn and her family as they discover an exciting new life in Go West, Young Woman. A True Montana Adventure, available online and in bookstores. Or visit quinnwildlifeart.com for a personalized signed copy. Critics agree, it's a hoot. Best-selling and award-winning author of true crime and crime fiction, Yvonne Mason is back with a brand new book, The Pink Canary, a book that delves into the life of a drag queen and a marvelous whodunit. You can find this and all of Yvonne's other works on Amazon.com or find Yvonne Mason on Facebook and Twitter. You're going to kill me. Buy your copy of Pink Canary now. Hi, this is Winona and Jade inviting you to join us and our wonderful guests on the And I Thought Women's Cave podcast. On Blog Talk Radio to learn more about our books, the And I Saw It series, and The Misfit Guides. They're available on Amazon.com and BarnesandNobles.com. Or just to see what your ladies are up to, you can find all of that out on www.andwethought.com. So peace and love from Winona and Jade and our books. <laughs> Girl, you know, so silly. silly. You silly. Remember Did you write that? That's funny. <laughs> Remember to visit us at andwethought.com. Germany, 1938. Charlotte, a young girl of 15, wanders into Georg's cobbler's shop to have her shoes repaired. Georg, enamored by Charlotte's charm and grace, decides then and there that he's going to marry her. But they must keep their love a secret from family, friends, and, most importantly, the Nazis. Follow along as Georg's pursuit of the young Charlotte results in the couple traveling a heart-stopping, winding route to stay one step ahead of the Gestapo in their escape from Nazi Germany, with a surprising twist along the way. If you like history and romance, don't miss Good Things Always Happen in Springtime by Joanne Fisher, available at www.joannesbooks.com. Juliana is a middle-aged housewife in Toronto with a career, a husband, that has little interest in her well-being, and three children. In the evenings, she gets on her computer and chats with people around the world. When she gets involved with Aaron and Bobby, her life becomes a pinball, bouncing around her husband, her job, her children, and her two online friends. She's bewitched by the romantic poetry of Aaron. But the honesty and kindness of Bobby bring her all the way to California. Watch for the ironic twist of fate that takes her in a direction she never expected. If you like spicy romances, don't miss With All of Me by Joanne Fisher. Available at www.joannesbooks.com Fiore is a young Italian woman engaged to be married but her plans are interrupted by a charismatic Sebastian, a handsome middle-aged Spanish businessman. Her beauty strikes him like a thunderbolt sent by the goddess Venus herself. When she's given a peculiar gift, a Spanish doll, she's thrown into a whirlwind of entangled passion, money, secrets, and love. 
Their romance sparks in a charming little Italian town located on the southern part of Lake Garda in northern Italy and takes them around the globe. What happens when her life is suddenly shattered by a lifelong secret? Her Spanish doll will bring you to a caliente Spain and a romantic Italy, adding some spice along the way. Available at www.joannesbooks.com. And we are back with the most amazing show. I it, it, I love Fridays around here. I never know what's going to happen. This is Off the <laughs> Chain. I'm your host, Yvonne Mason, with my sister from another mother, author Sherry Rinsler, and Eric Rosenberg, who was a surprise guest, and we are so glad he's here. He is a financial person, and he is teaching us all kinds of little neat tricks because being an author, being an artist, being a musician, it is a business, ladies and gentlemen, and you have to treat it as such. And Eric, that brings up a point that Sherry had written on her blog that she talked about earlier that most authors don't realize. When people come to me and they say, well, I don't want to write a book, I say, okay, number one, how bad do you want it? And number two, do you expect to make a million dollars? And if they say, I want it really, really bad, I said, then you got to be able to make sacrifices. I said, if you expect to make a million dollars, then get another line of work. I said, and writing is easy. <laughs> <laughs> the writing part is the easy part. Then you got to go out and put yourself out there, not your book. But yourself, because you are the brand, the book is the byproduct. Would you agree to that? I, I think that's that's pretty accurate. You know, there's some books that kind of stand out on their own. But when you think of some authors, like one of one of my favorite authors, uh, you may or may not have heard of his name, Max Berry. He's an Australian guy. And I know whenever he has a new book come out, I'm going to buy it because I like his brand. I like his books. I like what it's all about. And I actually discovered him from an old online computer game that doesn't exist anymore that tied to one of his books. So that, that was the brand that got me in, and now I've bought every single book he's ever written. So that brand is so important. If it works on me, it works on other people too. <laughs> yeah, and I absolutely agree with that. There are some authors that I, I buy their books without the series of the whatever book is coming out simply because I know their style and and what I can expect from them. So it is a given that I automatically will just buy the book. And usually and, not disappointed. Yes. And and Sherry, when you started it was it was difficult for you to cross that bridge and to say, Okay I've written this book. Now I've got to put myself out there and I've got to figure out how to make it work for me because not everybody's marketing strategy works for everybody else. You were talking about you started with Twitter. I started with MySpace. That's how far back I go. Do you still have a MySpace? (laughs) And I use it. (laughs) Because every tool is – the Internet is a beautiful creature. It's also a pain in my ass, but it is a beautiful thing <laughs> <laughs> if we use it right. And and as entrepreneurs and independent business people, that is our doorway. When I first started writing, there was no way that I would have been able to reach the audience that I reach now because we didn't have the Internet. I mean, we're talking way back in the 80s and 90s. It, it just wasn't there. And to be able to yep, say when I'm I- in the- Go ahead, Sherry. I was going to say, uh, when I first started, I I built, okay, I'm going to date myself now. Uh, When I built my first real website, which began the stories of the Bower, I had to use Netscape Composer to (laughs) build my website simply because I didn't like Microsoft's front page. I remember those ones. That 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 (laughs) takes me back. (laughs) <laughs> oh God! <laughs> and so I had to learn how to do my own, you know, some of my own coding, and I had friends to help teach me how to do graphics, and and, and you know, I had a whole lot of things to learn so I could get this website up and and start doing things. I thought that was pretty good, but I also remember when the internet was new enough that I had CompuServe and Prodigy, and all there were 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 like bulletin boards. And you didn't really do anything. You left some messages, and people might may get them, and they may not get them. And dial up was a you know, if you wanted to send something, it was a twenty minute, if you were lucky, process of you know <laughs> trying to you know get get a line somewhere. And so the internet has changed so much, and to evolve with it, uh, seeing a website evolve and change, and 
leaving Netscape Composer behind for building your own websites under, you know, dashboards and, and C panels and, and you know, with websites that had domains and things like that. And and so you have to evolve so that you your writing can evolve there too. And and we learned to do forums and guest books and, and that evolved into actual domains and, and then blogs. And so it's been a as technology evolved, the writer had to evolve with it. And and those who are coming along now who are doing all these new formats, folks like me who are like ancient <laughs> you know, we have to learn how to do the new stuff too. Or or at least find those platforms that we can keep our brand alive on, something steady and regular and and keep, you know, a steady presence. Um I think young people today have too many things to distract them and it's and it's easy to get a lot of stuff out there, but sometimes it's hard to stay focused. Would you oh, would you yeah. you understand what I'm talking about? Okay, I mean you're every person if you just if you commute to work on a daily basis, which luckily I get to work from home as as a writer, so I don't have to do that every day. But Amen. in my old Yeah, in my old commuting days, you know, by the time I got to my office I had probably been exposed to I don't know, two hundred advertisements between <laughs> billboards and a bus stop bench and something that pops up on your phone and then the ad on the radio and something if you're watching the morning news will you get ready? I mean, we're we're constantly bombarded by so much information. It's it's impossible to try to take in everything. You have to really cut through and focus just on the stuff that you care most about because otherwise we, we could drown in this sea of information today. Yeah, I think so. And and it's hard to get it's hard to stay focused and not get diverted by all of these different fun things that are out there. And so uh, the challenge for a writer is to get the book done first. And secondly, to focus the energies on those platforms, um, which will do them the most good, where the advertisements will reach the most people, and where they can actually sell and market to maximize any chance of profit. And finding those little niches are is the hard is the hard part. Yeah, if you if you and, think about it, if you put a lot of thought into it and think about where, you know. Think about what your target reader looks like. I mean, like, like put an avatar in your head. Like this is the kind of person who would read my book. And think about where they might hang out online. That's the places I might focus first. Like for me, I I, I downloaded Snapchat because my sister said I should. She's younger than me. I'm I'm at an age. I'm like I guess I'm right at the precipice age where I think Snapchat is stupid. But younger people <laughs> than me like it. I'm old enough that I, I aged out of Snapchat. Like that one, I know, know, I guess I could go on there and build some kind of an audience about personal finance there, but who am I really going to reach? Am I going to reach a potential customer? Am I going to reach someone I can really build a relationship with? You know, I don't think so. But on Twitter, where I I go on Twitter every day, for me, that's my primary social platform. Uh, There there are lots of people who want to learn about money. So when I write about money things, I connect with other money bloggers. You know, I found my money community there. So for me, it was Twitter over something like Snapchat. But if you, let's say you're a food author, if you write all about food and recipes and that's your thing, you'd probably do better on Pinterest than anywhere else mm-hmm. because that's the place people <laughs> pin all their recipes and all their food things. Uh, you just have to really think about who you're trying to reach and where they already are. You know, They're not going to necessarily come to you, so you go to them. That's what marketing is. There you go. Exactly. Yep. Say, so, Yvonne, before what- we... Before yes, we finish up tonight, can I can I say something to some folks out there? You can say anything you want to, my darling. I I have to I have to say some some thank yous out there. You know how I am about gratitude. Yes, um, ma'am. And I I always spend some time at the end of every book and make sure that some people know just how much I appreciate the things that they do for me. Because as a writer, I do not operate in a vacuum. You have to have help from lots of different sources in order to succeed. Um, whether you're promoting or marketing or publishing or you're still in the research phase, whatever you're doing, you you can't do it alone. So I want to make sure I say some, some thank yous out there. And first and foremost, for those of you who see the cover of my book, this beautiful, amazing cover of Love and Blood and the one that came before it, Time and Blood, the covers were done by Marissa Rose Wesley of Cover Me Darling, LLC. She is incredible. And my covers are always award-winning, 
And so if you're looking for a good designer, I highly recommend her. And I give her all my love because she really makes my stories look good. And this latest cover is so incredible. I love ah, it so much. It is. It's gorgeous. And um, I also want to thank Elaine Calloway, who is an Amazon bestselling author. She uh, writes stories about New Orleans that are ghostly and incredible. And she also has a, um, a cookbook. And she is... Um, someone I admire greatly, and she wrote the quote that's on the front of the cover saying that I have exotic vampires, fascinating mythology, and, and it is a must-read series. So I wanted to thank Elaine for taking the time out to, to again, make me look good, <laughs> and I appreciate it very much. And and there's some thank yous in the back of the book, including Miss Yvonne Mason from oh. Blog Talk Radio, because she's such she's such a friend and and she's warm and giving to all indie authors everywhere and and she deserves a lot of accolades for what she does for all of us over and over and over again and there's and there's lots of thank yous in the back of the book um um and I couldn't name them all possibly but um I just want to make sure that a few of these people understand how how much they're loved and how much gratitude I have for everything they've done to help me along this road and to getting this book published so and I don't know why we lost um, Eric. He, oh. he dropped. Hopefully he'll come back because I wasn't through with him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I sorry. I hope he'll come back too. Well, we're going to have to tell him. He has to come back. I'm going to send him a little note and tell him to come pop back on because I wasn't through with him. I'm going to tell him to call back in. Cause there you go. I wasn't, I wasn't done. How dare him leave us? <laughs> I done with He'll pay. He'll pay. I promise. He will pay. He will pay big time. <laughs> there but anyway, in see. this in this new book, I don't know how far along you were are yet in the reading of the new book, but I'm we back. have. I'm Sorry, I just lost back. me for a minute there. I disconnected. It was, it was my it was my phone's fault. Oh, I was I'll blame you are. on the phone. I was. I'm blaming technology. The... I'm blaming Microsoft. Actually, I called it I using was... Skype, so I could use my good microphone on my computer. And ah, Skype ah. decided it, it wanted to hang I, up. And I, here I, was I wasn't just, finished saying all those bad things I was saying about you. No. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just missing to send the monkeys after you. <laughs> I said, no, he did not hang up on us. <laughs> I said, he will pay. <laughs> yes, he will pay big time. I, but I apologize <laughs> for my brief lapse of presence, but I, I'm back and, and I'm I'm listening and I'm engaged. <laughs> okay. Continue, Sherry, and then we're going to attack him because we can. <laughs> okay. I just, I, I think I finished my gratitude. I just wanted to tell everybody that if you pick this book up, it's going to start off right away with a warning. It's going to follow up. There's going to be murder. There's going to be chaos. There's going to be uh, death threats. There's going to be um, sassiness. There's going to be seduction. There's going to be um, lots of. Um, mystery and then it's going to go to a slam bang on the way down the hill finish that will leave you breathless I promise and it's a little bit of a cliffhanger because you know I could just never oh, leave no, things as they are oh Sherry <laughs> oh you'll, you'll love it I promise okay. see I'm just I'm so. just getting into the good part they're all at the plantation and uh, um, the new one they know yeah, they, yeah, the one they're rebuilding, and not the not the new new house, but the one that they're oh. rebuilding after the fire. And they know oh, that okay. the bad people are in town, and they're uh-huh. all, they're they're oh, and and Dre and Victoria, Victoria's accused Dre of burning down her her shop. <laughs> That's where I am. Oh, you and they haven't even got to the good stuff yet. <laughs> no, and they all got their they all have their knickers in a twist, so. <laughs> Yeah, and Ray is telling everybody to stop, and nobody's listening. So. Right. <laughs> typical. Typical. So Anyway, so. The hour is almost up, ladies and gentlemen. This hour has gone by so fast. Sherry is coming back in December. Eric is coming in in October. And, Eric, since we friended each other, I'll give you the date. And what I'm going to do with tonight's show, I'm going to add Eric and his, his little bio on the show and add his little picture. And, Eric, when the show goes up into archives after we close I will put the show on my page and I'm going to tag you and Sherry and I want you to feel free to spread the show around Absolutely. yeah this is fun Who and Eric want to I want to find this you on great. Twitter so um, 
I am Poet Phoenix on Twitter. So uh, well, I'm pretty much Poet Phoenix everywhere. <laughs> so I try um, to be Eric Prophet. I actually I try to be Eric Rosenberg everywhere, but there's about a dozen Eric Rosenbergs, and I wasn't first everywhere. So some aw. places I have to be Eric Prophet. <laughs> okay. So he's Eric Prophet on Twitter. Now, what was it you said that you you had fun on a show you didn't know you were going to be on, right? <laughs> Well, I knew I was going to be here. You didn't know I was going to be here. Oh, that's right. <laughs> oh I do like he's so snarky. I do like him. <laughs> yep, he fits right in. I like him very much. Yes, and I'm sure we're going to learn lots more from him in the future. I'm looking forward to it. Oh, yeah, I'll share if uh, anyone is interested. I have a free week-long video series. If you go to personalprofitability.com slash boot camp and put your email in there, you'll get an email every morning for a week with a free lesson about personal finance. Wow. Sounds like a great deal. That's a great um, deal. I, absolutely. No credit okay. card required. It is actually free. I'm not so hey. anything. <laughs> yeah. I like that's it. awesome. So since we're on this, Sherry, tell everybody where you can be found, my love. Okay, well the website is Sherry Rensselaer dot com. Um I am the Poet Phoenix on Instagram. I'm Poet Phoenix on Twitter. Um, you can find me as Poet Phoenix on Amazon and Goodreads. Um, so I'm I'm everywhere. Look out! I'm always lurking. <laughs> um, my <laughs> Facebook page is Author Sherry Rensler, and I would love to um, have you come join me. If you go to the website SherryRensler.com, you can sign up for my newsletter um, because newsletter people get first dibs on a lot of sneak peeks and special giveaways that don't appear anywhere else. So. If you really want to be on Secrets, that's where you need to go. So, Mr. Eric, let the folks know where you can be found, my friend. Yeah, so the easiest place is to find me on the web at personalprofitability.com. I have the blog there, also the Personal Profitability Podcast, soon to be a Personal Profitability book. You guys motivated me. I need to hit the keyboard and finish it up. Yes, <laughs> I'm also sir. on hey. Twitter. At as, as I mentioned, Twitter, Eric Profits, or uh, I'm on most of the social networks, as, uh, or Eric Rosenberg1 on Pinterest or Instagram. There's a few places to find me. <laughs> so now and, we're going to ask she, Eric, often now, we're going to ask Eric, how come you're not writing? Go write. It, 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 well, yeah, I write exactly. a lot, actually. I've been write, <laughs> my, my problem is I've been writing articles, not books. Well, that's not my problem. That's my income. So I, uh, I started my career. I'll give you like the 16-second version because I know we're running out of time. I started thinking I was going to be a corporate finance guy for my career, and I was on the way up the ladder, and I started writing as a little hobby when I quit working in a bank. And that little blog grew into a full-time income that let me go full-time and quit my job in 2016. So I, I write every day. Probably, I probably write at least two or 3,000 words a day. They're just not in my book. They're uh, different personal finance articles. That's Way excellent. To That's great. Go. See, I do believe, I do believe in divine providence. It was meant for you to be here tonight. And thank you for fitting right in. You don't know how that just tickles me to death. Mm-hmm. Well, you're easy to hang out with. You, 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 you ladies are fun. We could, I'd do this thank anytime. You. <laughs> thank you. Well, we'll have to have you both back on at the same time and continue this conversation. But he is and, hypnotized. And I, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, we just sucked you right in, Eric. I'm in the vampire <laughs> trance. It, it, it's already taken hold. <laughs> there you go. Don't hang up when the show goes dark, and Sherry knows why, because I want to say some, some things to you. But um, I want to thank both of you from the bottom of my heart for being here. Sherry understands where I am in my life right now. And <clears throat> this hour has regenerated me in a way y'all have no idea i appreciate you both very very much for for being here and for having so much fun it the hour flew by ladies and gentlemen y'all know at the end of every show there's two things that i say one of those things is people will forget what you wear they will forget what you look like they will forget your name but they will never ever ever forget how you've made them feel we are all on a journey and sometimes that journey is very difficult. There's bends in the road, there's bumps in the road, there's potholes in the road. And when someone smiles at someone who's having a very bad day, or just like tonight, this show just made my day, made my week. It's important that we do that because we may save a life. Also, if you want to achieve greatness, ladies and gentlemen, 
Don't ask permission because nobody's going to give it to you. You are all great. Your children are great. My guests are great. Just go out and do it. Encourage your children to understand that they are great. They have a purpose. They are our future. And when we lose one child, we lose a thread to our tapestry of the future that we can never get back. Encourage your children to do those things that they want to do, to reach for the stars and grab the moon, because we only go around once. With that being said, I want to thank my guest, Dr. Sherry Rensler, and financial planner and future author, Eric Rosenberg, and we will hound him till he publishes because we like that. <laughs> we just suck Please him right do. in. And join us again tomorrow night when we will be getting a call from the other one. Um, she will be joining us at 8 o'clock our time, 3 o'clock in the morning her time. Until then, this is Off the Chain. I'm your host, Yvonne Mason, and we say good night. Now, Sherry knows the drill, Eric, but what will happen is, like I said, when the show goes up into archives, I will put the link on my page. I will tag both of y'all. This is my gift to my guests. You can take this show and put it on your blog, send it out through your network. Now, tomorrow, I will put this show up on SoundCloud, Spreaker, Podcast.com, Podcast Garden, iTunes, YouTube, Reverb Nation, iHeartRadio, FM.com, and TuneIn Radio. When I put it up on the podcast, it automatically goes to some of those places. But I will also send you, put the links up on my page and tag you. And you take those links and you put them out there everywhere. Start building your book brand now. That's right, Eric. Start now. I'm I'm on it. It's underway. It started as the blog brand, and then the, the book is the natural extension. There you Actually, go. Actually, I started writing. I'd been wanting. So I wrote the first book, the short book, um, that personal finance arsenal, probably five ish, seven years ago now. And mm-hmm. it was less than a year ago. I was on a plane, and I'd been thinking about the new book. And I I don't know what happened. It was like a six hour flight. And I just felt like this is the moment I'm going to start. And I opened up a Word doc, and I'm, I got to around, I mean, not on that flight at this point. Let's see, it's on my desktop. I can tell you where I'm at right now on my Word count. <laughs> I, take Listen a second to for Word to load. <laughs> Here we go. Anyway, I'm at, Yvonne, uh, while, he, 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 while he looks that up, I just want to say thank you so much. Um, you're welcome. You, you, it just means everything to have this opportunity always to talk about the books and to to hear you know how far we've we've come from when you first started talking to me and and everything and I just am so grateful and I love you so much. I love you, my darling. The first time she was on my show, Eric, she was she was a little bit scared that most people are because you're talking to a, it's a live show. And, and this, the reach of this thing just sometimes blows people's mind. And I said, Sherry, it's just you and I having a conversation with 150,000 listeners. It's no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> and after that, we just settled in. And next thing you know, the hour was done and I was flabbergasted. It was like, is that it? That's it already? And <laughs> after that, I was like, oh, let's do this again. So <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's an addiction, Eric. Trust me, you will get addicted. Oh, yeah. I, I love it. I love the podcast world. It is so cool. Well, I, I, I was I actually just the, at uh, Podcast Movement a month ago. That's a, a big podcasting conference. It was in Philadelphia. So I, it was really fun. I was all in a room with only podcasters for three days. Ooh, oh, wow. So cool. That would be <laughs> and, uh, fun. Next week, it'll be um, – I'll actually be in Florida. I'll be in Orlando next week for FinCon, which is the, the big financial blogging and media conference. Ooh. And there's yeah, a lot of podcasters and YouTubers and all that good stuff there. And you will only be an hour and a half north of me, my friend. I thought when I, I heard you say with Florida, I was like, oh, I'm going to be in the neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, actually, you are, because <laughs> I am. I am in Port St. Lucie, which is an hour and a half south of Orlando. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, my growing up, my uh, grandma was she was a snowbird. She did uh, summers in Minneapolis, which is where I was born, and winters in Fort Lauderdale. And then my aunt That's... and uncle they just they just moved to Denver from Coral Springs. So I had a lot That's of on the south west coast. Yep. Yep. And I went to junior high and high school in Titusville, so right there on the east coast of Florida. So, Which is right up the street from me. This mm-hmm. is amazing. See, things happen for a reason. What an amazing evening 
just oh and, and Eric when when you'll be like Sherry I'm gonna tell you you'll be like Sherry when I when I put up the the shows for the month if I have an open night I have people emailing me and sending me messages saying I want that slot I want so then I have to put all the names in a hat and draw the names out. Well, but you can be sure, Eric, she will put you in right as soon as you publish that book because she will want to be on the cutting yeah. edge of the announcement when the book comes out. So, awesome. yeah, we, you know, we have I, I have it open right now. I'm at uh, 9,215 words. Oh, got so, a long way wow. to go yet, babe. <laughs> I have a long way to go. But finance books are often, you know, I was, I'm shooting for about 60,000 words. And some people go. tell me that's a little long for this type. They say I should probably shoot more for 50,000. But I, think I would think you'd, you'd want to get the novella uh, right around the novella, which is forty to fifty thousand, forty-five to fifty thousand words, and I would think that more than that you would start to lose people who are street people like me. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, that's, I'm I'm breaking it up into four main sections, um, and there will definitely be parts that probably don't apply to everybody, but then there will be parts that really apply to everybody. There so you go. It, it'll be like. Oh, it'll be like a personal finance book, I guess, like that. <laughs> yeah, well, if you start out, nothing is exact for everybody. That's why it's called personal finance. It's personal. Everyone's stuff is so different. Yeah. And if you I start out wait. with the basics and then go all the way to advanced, then that's a book to keep. See? I have and, had 10,000-word days before. So it wouldn't uh, – if I locked myself away, I've thought about going to – like. It's like, where's the most boring place I could go kind of near where I live that nothing could distract me and I could just finish it? So I was thinking about going to Bakersfield for a weekend because I've never been there and, and everyone makes fun of it. It's from L.A. So I guess I'll like a boring place I could go. And I just had a thought. I just had an epiphany. We should oh. market his – I know it's scary, isn't it? We should, <laughs> <laughs> we should market his book to indie authors as a tool for their business. If he's got the information in there, it's a quick sell. Yeah, that's the the fourth section is about you know, building businesses and side hustle. It's, it's a lot about side hustles. So it'll be you know, people who have a primary job and want to add something else as another income source. So new authors, uh, that's perfect for that. Absolutely. But if you don't Thank market you. it with those words, they won't get it. I promise you. Yeah. So yeah, that's, you, yeah. You've got to write that down as one of your hooks, Eric. Write that down as one of your hooks. Putting on my. You start talking about right side now. jobs and stuff like that. Indie authors will just be like, "That's not me." So <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And and with that, I'm going to let you both get back to your families. I appreciate so much both of you spending an hour with me. It it really really helped me in ways I can't express right now. Yeah, well, you amazing. know that Jack is in Jack's in my prayers, um, as are you, of course. And you need to let me know as soon as something happens. And by the way, when you read the book, I want to hear from you when the when you discover the thing that has happened that I did for you. So I want you to Uh-oh. contact me. <laughs> I'm you curious, like what this secret is. What's this? What's this thing just okay, for one well, person? Okay, well, here's a hint. She named a character in the last book. His name is Ransad. That's his elf name. And his in his being around human name is Rico. And um and he unfortunately was killed in the last book. And so something happens in this book and she just has to see what happens. And she will oh, be pleasantly Eric, surprised. Now Eric's gotta <laughs> buy the book. You've gotta buy yeah, the book. I'm, I'm gonna have to get all I'm gonna have to get the whole series. And read all the way up to there, so I get it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm and, not going to argue with that. <laughs> um, Sherry, um, go on my friends and and add him to your friends list because he I friended him during the during the course of the show so that I could tag him on the show, and then okay. I will also send you the date for the October show. And Sherry's coming back in December, and then I'll bring you both back. Oh, this is going to be so much fun. Oh, yeah, you bet. <laughs> Eric, it was a pleasure meeting you. I look forward to interacting with you in the future. Yes, it was great connecting, and thanks for having me on the show. It was fun being here, even though it was an unexpected drop-in. I, I well, had a lot of fun. <laughs> but it was meant to Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Thank Yvonne. you, my darling. Thank you, thank you, talk thank to you. you soon. I'll talk to both of y'all real soon. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have Bye-bye. a great weekend. Bye-bye.
Point out the colors of you. I see them too, and boy, I like them. I like them. I like them. We way too fly to partake in all this hate. We out here vibing. We vibing. We vibing. Alexa, play Ariana Grande. Okay. With Amazon Music, a voice is all you need. Get tens of millions of songs. Download the Amazon Music app today. My heart skips skipping the beach and not close enough so that space between you and me, let's lose it. The way you're dancing, swaying to the music, girl, that body and how you move it. Every time you cross my mind, girl, I lose it. Alexa, play the Country Heat playlist. Okay. I don't think you know what you're doing to me, you got with Amazon Music, a voice is all you need. Get tens of millions of songs. Download the Amazon Music app today.